Hi, my name is Dustin Pankery. I'm a technical representative here at Starting Line Products. And today we're going to do an overview on how to check for proper belt to sheave clearance and how to adjust your shimming to achieve proper belt to sheave clearance. Now we're mostly going to use a Polaris clutch today, but the processes are basically the same between the Articat and the Polaris primary clutch. The only major differences are the weights on the Art most of the Articat clutches have set screws that you'll need to remove, where the Polaris does not. But other than that, the tools and the process processes are almost the same. The tools that we're going to try to use today are a brand new OEM belt or the belt that you're going to use on the machine all the time. We'll use an 8 inch Allen wrench, a 3 8 nut driver, a ratchet, a 10 millimeter socket or on the Articats it would be a 3 8 We will have a hammer and a punch to make alignment marks or a black magic marker to make alignment marks. We'll use a feeder gauge set, spare spider shims in case we need to add them, thread locking compound, you'll want to consult the manual to decide which type of thread locking compound you're going to need, spider nut removal tool, spider removal tool, we're going to use an impact today just to speed the process up a little bit, we've got a set of calipers so we can measure our shims, we've got a solid breaker bar with a three quarter adapter welded onto it. We've got a cheater pipe to give us some leverage. We've got a clutch press tool. Of course, a couple of clutches here, a small propane torch, some WD-40 to help us back the parts off. And we've also got a clutch holding fixture mounted to a solid uh, mount here that's bolted to the concrete floor. Some of these parts are torqued to over 200 foot pounds, so we'll need that to be as solid as we possibly can. So let's go ahead and move on to the process. One thing to take into consideration before we check our belt to sheave clearance is that different ramps or weights can affect the belt to sheave clearance based on the fact that they can have a different heel height or a different ramp profile. So you want to go ahead and install whatever weights or ramps you're going to be running before you check your belt to sheave clearance. That way when we check the belt to sheave clearance we'll know that it's accurate for the application that we're going to be running. The first thing we need to do is try to determine if our belt to sheave clearance is correct. And to do that, we'll take a measurement, we'll use a brand new belt that does need to be new as if you try to use a used belt, uh, it could be worn slightly and give you a false measurement. We'll place the belt in between the two sheaves and we'll pull it as tight as we can and then we'll slide it to one sheave so that all of the gap is on the opposite side. We'll take our feeler gauge We'll stick our feeler gauge down in between the side of the belt and the sheave and measure how much gap we have. Now, in most applications you want between 10 and 20 thousandths belt to sheave clearance. Any more than 20 thousandths, we'll want to remove shims underneath the spider to tighten up that gap. Any less than 10 thousandths, we'll want to add shims to the spider in order to make the proper amount of belt to sheave clearance. Now all drive clutches are balanced from the factory and we want to try to maintain that balance as closely as we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark each individual part that we take apart so that we can get them in the correct orientation when we reassemble the clutch. Now there's a couple different ways to do that. We can use a black magic marker and simply put a mark on all three of the parts which would be the cap, the spider, and the movable sheave. But a little bit more permanent way to do it is to take a punch and make a punch mark on each one of those parts. That way the mark can't be washed off or wiped off. Now some of these clutches from the factory already have a mark from the factory and it'll usually be in the form of an X or a dot and you'll be able to see it on the top of the cap and then on the spider as well as on the movable sheave. So you can look for those marks and if they're already there that'll save you a little bit of time. But one of the things we really want to make sure about is that we reassemble it with the proper orientation and all those marks are lined up during assembly. So now that we've determined how much belt to sheave clearance we have, we can go ahead and disassemble the clutch and we'll use our press tool to do that here. Stick it in the press, clamp it down, use a 10 millimeter and remove the cap. Now you want to be careful removing this chain because there's a lot of pressure on it and sometimes the cap can hang up. So just gently relieve the pressure to make sure it doesn't hang up. Then you can remove the cap. We'll go ahead and dump out the bolts. We'll just make a quick inspection of the cap to make sure there's no cracks anywhere, that the bushing inside is smooth. We can take the spring off, 
slide it down on the shaft and check for any side play. Now we'll go ahead and continue with the disassembly of the clutch by removing the spider nut and the spider itself. And to do that, we'll need a clutch holding tool like the one we have mounted here. Now the spider nut and the spider itself are torqued to over 200 foot-pounds of torque and they have Loctite on them so it's going to take a significant amount of force to remove them. We've mounted our holding tool to a pretty secure platform that's bolted to the concrete and able to keep it solid enough that we can remove these parts. So we'll go ahead and mount it on here. You'll see there's some cutouts on the back. We'll line them up with the cutouts here. Screw on the retaining nut. We'll need to apply heat to soften the Loctite. We'll apply heat for between 30 seconds and one minute, evenly around the base of the spider nut, trying not to get it on the shaft. Now that we've added our heat, we'll add just a little bit of lubricant. We'll use our spider nut removal tool. A solid shaft with a three-quarter adapter welded on and a breaker pipe over top of that. Use a glove or a pair of pliers to remove the nut as it's still, st still going to be pretty hot. Now we'll go ahead and apply heat to the spider. We'll try to do it evenly on all three sides. We'll apply heat for 30 to 45 seconds. After applying the heat, we'll add a little bit of lubrication for the threads. We'll use our spider removal tool, our solid bar, and our cheater pipe to help us get the spider loose. All right, now that we've got the spider loose, we'll go ahead and remove it. Use the glove because it's still going to be hot. Then we'll remove the stock shims and the movable sheave. We'll set them aside. Then you'll want to take a wire brush and remove any residue from the thread locker that's left on the threads. Now before we reassemble, we need to check everything out to make sure that all the parts are in proper working order. And to do that, you have to have clean parts. The easiest way to do that is to use hot, soapy water, a Brillo pad, and just clean all the parts individually so you can get a good look at them. On the spider, we've got rollers and buttons that need to be inspected. If the roller spins freely and there's no play, the roller's good. You can flip it over, inspect each area for cracks, and it looks like this part's good so we can go ahead and move on to the next piece. The movable sheave, really the only thing that's serviceable there, is you've got an inner bushing. That should be a smooth surface. And then you've got inside your weights, where the pins go through, there's bushings. Those bushings are replaceable. SLP sells a, a tool that makes so you can press those bushings out. We also sell the bushings. They're very easy to replace. As long as there's no side to side play, we're good on the weights and we can move forward there. Here we have the shims that we removed during the disassembly process and we went ahead and measured these and I've got two 20,000 shims as well as a bottoming shim. Now when I me measured the belt to sheave clearance earlier, it was determined that we had 20 thousandths too much shim. The easy solution here is just to remove one of the 20 thousandths shim and that'll get us where we need to be during reassembly. However, there is going to be some cases where you might be too tight on the belt to sheave clearance and you'll need to add shims. Shims are available at the dealer, they're also available at SLP, and you'll just do the math to determine how many shims you need in order to make the belt to sheave clearance proper during the reassembly process. So we've gone ahead and inspected the components and now we can begin the reassembly process. You see we've got our threads cleaned up. There's no more residue of thread, uh, thread locker there. First thing we'll do is we will install the movable sheave and we'll follow that up with the appropriate shims. And before we can install the spider, we have to remember that the factory recommends a little bit of Loctite 
or thread locker on the threads, you'll need to consult the OEM manual to determine what type of thread locker to use. When you apply the thread locker in the spider, you want to be careful to use enough that you can get a good lock or a good hold, but not so much that we have excess dripping down into the movable sheaf bushing. That excessive thread locking compound will actually seize up the movable sheaf bushing and then your clutch won't work right after that. So any residue needs to be wiped off with a rag when you're done. Okay, now that we've gone ahead and threaded the spider down on the shaft, we can go ahead and torque it to the factory recommended spec. Just make sure that before you do that, you've made, lined up your alignment marks on the movable sheave and the spider itself. Okay, so we went ahead and torqued our spider down to the appropriate uh, factory recommended torque. We'll need to do the same thing with the spider nut. Again, we'll apply the appropriate amount of thread locking compound onto the nut, thread it on the shaft, and torque it accordingly. Theoretically, at this point, we could go ahead and finish the reassembly of the clutch, but it's a good idea before you do that to double check that we've got the proper belt to sheave clearance. So we'll just go ahead and take our belt again, run it down in between the two sheaves, and use our feeler gauge to make the check. Okay, our measurements look good. So we can go ahead and finish the reassembly. We'll reinstall our clutch into the clutch press tool. Install the spring, check our alignment marks, make sure they're lined up, put the bolts back in, and secure the cap. Now as you can see, I'm not using the impact wrench to tighten down these cap bolts, and the reason for that is it's pretty easy to over tighten them and strip the threads. You'll want to consult the manual and tighten them down to the factory recommended torque specs. So as you can see, the process of checking your belt to sheave clearance and re-shimming for proper belt to sheave clearance isn't too tough. For more information on these processes or the tools that you've seen us use, call us at 208-529-0244 or go to our website at www.startinglineproducts.com.